evening and a particularly warm welcome to the new chairman of the BBC, Gavin Davis, who denies he's one of Tony's cronies, despite the fact that he's given thousands of pounds to new labour. His wife runs Gordon Brown's private office and he hosted Peter Mandelson's 40th birthday party. <laughs> so, welcome to him and we look forward to our new slot next week at the same time on BBC Choice. <laughs> In the news this week, Osama bin Laden's shock parachute attack on Parliament Square is scuppered by a sudden gust of wind. <laughs> Four months after being saved from the foot and mouth cull, video footage reveals the current whereabouts of Phoenix the calf. And as investigators look to the Arab world for the evil mastermind behind the terror campaign, all evidence points to one. On Ian Hislop's team, a comedian from the States who won last year's Perrier Award at Edinburgh but admitted feeling extremely nervous as the envelope was opened, something a lot of Americans are having to get used to. Rich Hall. <laughs> and with Paul Merton tonight is the author of Geoffrey Archer's biography with which Lord Archer refused to cooperate, resulting in it being full of barefaced facts and glaring accuracies. <laughs> Michael Frick. Round one is still our favourite way of starting the show. Ian and Rich, get this clue. Um, that's a plane. It's one of Blair's advisors. <laughs> oh, the president! <laughs> <coughs> oh, can't remember who he is. And that's Gracie Fields, isn't it? <laughs> or is it Dame Vera Lynn? Neither, I think you'll find. Oh, right. But she is entertaining the troops. Is that in alphabetical order? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she's going through them, but... Um... <laughs> So, uh, what is the title of this war? Well, they debated over this. For a mm -hmm. while it was uh, 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 Infinite Justice, yeah. and then uh, they changed their mind to Eternal Justice. Yes, I think they eventually settled on Enduring Freedom. Enduring Operation. Freedom. Enduring Freedom. Right, yeah. I think they should just call it Find the Guy Before Anthrax in My Backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although this was announced by Colin Powell, who doesn't seem to be able to even pronounce the word Colin. <laughs> No, he's a dove, though, isn't he? He's one of the moderates. Uh, in this particular war, he is, yeah. Yeah. I think it was his idea to drop these, uh, what they call the humanitarian aid packages onto the heads of the Afghans. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I, don't, I don't know if you saw the actual contents of the, uh, they were called daily food rations, and then underneath it says, a gift of the people of the United States. A gift. But it yeah. says it in three languages. Yes. Which are... Spanish, French, and uh, English. Good. Yeah. <laughs> And the actual ingredients are uh, uh, freeze-dried uh, red beans and rice, peanut butter, jam. These are all the ingredients of a uh, Cajun child's diet, but not a... And, uh, and a moist towelette. I'm not making this up. A moist towelette. And it says in three different languages, do not eat. <laughs> now, given that there's a three-year drought, I would imagine that would be the most mouth-watering item in the entire <laughs> But Bush now seems to be happy to befriend uh, the Pakistani leader, even though two years ago he didn't seem to know uh, General Musharraf's identity. The new Pakistani general has just been elected. He's, he's a, not elected. This guy took over office. He appears he's going to bring stability to the country, and I think that's good news for the subcontinent. And you can name him? General. I can name the general. And it's? General. <laughs> So, how have the newspapers reacted and TV and... Calm, measured, <laughs> responsible. Yeah. Right. They managed to come up with photographic evidence of proof that uh, Osama bin Laden was behind the attack. Uh, the Mirror did, quite soon after the attack. There we are. <laughs> uh, with Osama bin Laden's face. <laughs> but according to the British papers, we're now living under anthrax terror in this country, a wave of panic, but everybody's worried about anthrax. Well, News of the World said it might happen, and do you know what they suggested that we did? Piss on your own of... hanky. <laughs> That's what you used to do in the first war, during the mustard gas. Did they? Yeah, and the troops, yeah, piss on your hanky, I would breathe through that. Did it work? No, but it gave you something to do. You <laughs> uh, no, they recommend uh, rubbing flour and cat litter into your skin. <laughs> 
Uh, of course, no one's claimed responsibility for the anthrax attacks. No, no. As yet, although the Iraqi foreign minister was asked if Baghdad was behind it, and he came up with this diplomatic response. No way that Iran could have been the source of this anthrax. Bullshit. <laughs> this is my response. Well, the newspapers have done a few other things. They've also looked at people's handwriting to have see. They? Yes. They came to the conclusion after looking at Bush's handwriting, here it is, uh, that it's joined up. <laughs> Uh, and then, yes, a crack team of scientists uh, analysed this. Some of Bin Laden's uh, signature. But it does look like a rifle, doesn't it? Uh, do you know what it shows? His name? Uh, it does show his name, yes. Uh, it shows aggression and violence oh. and a wish uh, for vengeance against society. <laughs> you, you'd never know that from listening to him, though, no. would you? <laughs> now, who's been photographed standing shoulder to shoulder with Osama? It's a uh, Bert from Sesame Street. A uh, Bert the Muppet. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. We can have a look. <laughs> <laughs> and the TV Just... coverage has that been any more sensible? Well, uh, it's all full of secret signs, isn't it? Mm. Bush and Blair have asked us not to watch Osama bin Laden in case he's saying something secret. So when he's saying the words, "I want to kill everybody in the West," <laughs> there's some sort of secret message going on. There. <laughs> So there have been one or two uh, BBC uh, correspondents who've uh, been out of order. John Simpson, who he often comes on this programme, he was wearing a burqa mm -hmm. and dressed up as a woman and went into Afghanistan. Yes, the son... He's settled down now, isn't he? He's getting <laughs> married. <laughs> <laughs> Met a nice man out there. Uh, really? <laughs> That's nice for him, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> This worked out very well, actually. Excellent. There was one quote in one of the papers that said, read how John Simpson was smuggled in inside the Sunday Telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> it's the well, paper of choice in Afghanistan. <laughs> well, the, the Sun did uh, show us how he might have looked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It could be him, or it could be the person that turns up at the end of the Scooby-Doo cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fairground owner. <laughs> Who's been benefiting from the war thus far? Effigy salesmen. <laughs> yes, they've been doing well. Um, Spore cultivists. <laughs> Evidently. And the troops, of course, have been entertained by Jerry, as we saw. That's a benefit, is it? Yes. And Steps and Bobby Davro. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't put them in the... In the mood for killing people, I don't know what will. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, Joe Moore, the uh, PR officer. Yes. Stephen Byers. Yes, she's rather been buried in this first question, hasn't she? <laughs> this is the woman who was watching the Twin Towers, the government spin doctor, and one hour after the first plane hit, she sent an email saying, This would be a really good time to bury any bad news. How about local councillors' expenses? Unbelievable. An hour later. God, we're accused of being cynical. <laughs> I mean, we're not in her league. Mm. Did you see her apology? Mm. It was absolutely classic New Labour apology. She said, I'm very, very sorry, mainly to her bosses, for causing the embarrassment. No apology to the victims. And then she said, but, hey, we all make mistakes, and the important thing is that we learn. <laughs> you can't resist telling us off, New Labour, <laughs> even when they've made the most enormous cock-up. Mm. I thought the important thing that was she was sacked. <laughs> Uh, it's the war on terror in Afghanistan, where America's precision bombing of military targets has intensified with the use of missiles so accurate they can hit the exact centre of a big red cross. <laughs> As uh, fears of anthrax attacks spread, the British government's clear message to the public was don't panic, and uh, keen to do its bit, the Mirror did manage to get part of the message across. <laughs> This week, launching a draconian new bill to stem religious hatred, David Blunkett has been accused of trying to censor comedy, though clearly it's a fundamental right to make jokes that may cause offence, and you'd be blind not to see it. <laughs> uh, Paul and Michael, uh, another story which fortunately refuses to go away. This is uh, Mary and Geoffrey Archer. Liar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can William Hague, Vincent, William Hague yeah, the man who said he was a man of pro between Ted Francis, the man who brought Archer down. There he is again, the liar. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is in the dock giving evidence in his play, which he didn't do in his court case, with the result he went to jail in that van and uh, was locked up 
behind a door like this one. <laughs> yes. So, um, did you catch the trial at all? I caught all of it, all 43 days, in court every day. Were you? Yeah, only four people saw the whole thing, me and the judge and uh, a couple of the lawyers. Did you have to queue up every day? No, I had a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and did Archer ever acknowledge you? Did he ever wave or...? No, he, uh, he opened the door for me once. But uh, Mrs Archer tried to uh, block my way on one occasion. <laughs> Wouldn't let me go past. I told me, little space like that, six inches. And she said, oh, no, you can get past me. <laughs> he was like, come on, Michael. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and is she fragrant? Uh, <laughs> I wasn't that close. Right. Jeffrey Archer's probably been telling her what six inches is for years. And <laughs> <laughs> so, um, where is the liar now, even as we speak? The liar. He's uh, in uh, North Sea Camp Open Prison, where he moved this week. Mm. <laughs> this is the fourth <laughs> prison, isn't it, that he's been to so far? I thought it was the third, but mate, you're, probably be you're probably better informed than me. You've got a lot more That's research. highly unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have fallen this, into that. In terms of anorak, you are total <laughs> respect. <laughs> <laughs> and what's he spending his time doing? Up in North Sea Camp. Well, his publishers have asked him to write a diary, a prison oh. diary. God He's going to get his uh, secretary to forge it for him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel sorry for him at all, Michael? No. Nope. <laughs> right. I don't see the point in putting him in prison. Because he's just going to write again. <laughs> If he was in Iran, we could chop his hands off, couldn't we? <laughs> My grandmother used to say, don't take the man to the pen, take the pen from the man. <laughs> was she a well woman? No. <laughs> but imagine, you know, if things had turned out differently in, this, in these troubled times, he could now be mayor of London. Mm. We would never have heard of blood, it. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You wrote to Haig, didn't you, even before he was standing for Mayor of London to yeah, try and I, warn him? I, that's right. I wrote to Haig and said, there are six great stories about Archer which the world is waiting to uncover. And uh, if you want, I'll come and tell you what they are. And, and did he get a response? Me. Have so, they been uncovered, these six great stories? I'm afraid so, yes. Yeah, so All of them? Yeah, yeah. You haven't got a special one, you can hold it back. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Archer's obviously uh, very aware of your interest in him. We've got a clip of him here complaining about the way that the BBC make programmes about him. Oh, hello, Mr. Crick. What do you think of Geoffrey Archer? Clip, clip, clip. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? You wait till I'm there. You'll find out how tough I am. <laughs> Can I put a special request in to see that all again? <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't see why not. Let's have anything else. Oh, hello, Mr. Crick. What do you think of Geoffrey Archer? Clip, clip, clip. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? You wait till I'm there. You'll find out how tough I am. Christ almighty. Wonderful. Brilliant. You have to have a heart of stone not to laugh out loud, wouldn't you? Yes. <laughs> It is funny how whenever the Tories look as though they might be just coming off the level of utterly hopeless, oh, Archer pops it. up <laughs> <laughs> and it's just all over again, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, Rupert Allison appeared. You remember Rupert Allison? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This programme was sued for calling Allison a conniving little shit. <laughs> and he lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, legally... Legally, he's a conniving little shit. <laughs> yeah. And this week, a judge said that he was a dishonest witness. So now even the judicial system agrees with us. <laughs> yes, and we're exonerated. Um, yes, it's the trial and imprisonment of Lord Archer. After the verdict, a fellow disgraced Conservative Jonathan Aitken gave a bleak description of the treatment Archer could expect on his first day in prison. He will be put in handcuffs, he will be intimately strip-searched, and there may be a bit of unpleasantness. <laughs> In effect, just the sort of thing he used to pay 70 quid a time for. <laughs> so at the end of that round, these scores, unlike Geoffrey Archer's diaries, are identical, being as they are to all. <laughs> round two this week features every fascinating fact regarding the life and times of Mr Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> uh, so, fingers on the buzzers. Uh, what is Mr. Duncan Smith's official position? Don't know. <laughs> He's the leader of the Conservative Party. <laughs> uh, leader of the Conservative Party is correct for two points, which means at the end of this round... <laughs> uh, Paul... <laughs> Paul 
and Michael lead by four points to two. <laughs> And so to our largely arbitrary odd one out round, just one per team this week, the usual random quartets with equally spurious connections, Paul and Michael, your fatuous foursome is Tony Blair, Spotted Richard, Defra, and The Devil's Arse. <laughs> the Devil's Arse? Is correct. Well, it sounds like a rather dodgy pub in Lewisham, doesn't it? <laughs> Probably is. You going up The Devil's Arse tonight, no? <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit packed on a Friday, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I might pop me head in for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Defra, um, that's the Department of Rural Affairs, is it? Or something like uh, that? It's a word to that effect, yeah. Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. Yeah. Right, OK. So that's a new name change. I think it must be about changing names. Spotted Richard, if there's probably been some sort of thing about Spotted Dick is rude or something, I don't know, some idiotic thing. The Devil's Arse, I mean, probably some sort of cave, isn't it? Uh, probably as a tourist attraction, it wasn't doing very well. It's probably now called the, the Grotto of Loveliness <laughs> or Slime World. I think <laughs> Tony Blair's the odd one out because he hasn't changed his name, unless, of course, you count that he's shortened his name from Anthony. You're almost right. The answer is that they've all had their names changed uh, for PR purposes. Right. Uh, apart from Tony Blair, who had his name changed on his file uh, by a trainee at the AA. From Tony Blair to Saddam Hussein, a.k.a. Twatface. <laughs> Where is this? At uh, the AA. At the AA? The AA. <laughs> Do the they trainee. come out, Tony breaks down, he has to give that number... <laughs> Uh, he was sacked, this guy. He'd only been at the AA for two <laughs> days. Big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spotted Richard. Yes, you were virtually right. Um, the new name uh, for Spotted Dick at Tesco's, according to uh, Tesco's corporate affairs man, uh, David Saw. Um, <laughs> customers are embarrassed by the name. And David Saw should know, really, shouldn't he? <laughs> The other reason is that uh, Dick is old-fashioned uh, abbreviation for Richard, apparently. Nowadays, the more trendy abbreviation is Rick or Ricky. Spotted Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but not rich, I can't help noting rich. No. no, no not no. fashionable. Uh, what, uh, rich is not fashionable for Richard? Mm. Not, uh, not a fashionable abbreviation, according to Tesco's. They're right. And Defra, yes, is the new name for math. math. Yeah, as was. It's yes. a more sinister name, though, isn't it? Defra. Well, you know, the man from Math is at the door, fine, you can open the door. The man from Defra. Yeah. <laughs> you go and hide under the sofa, wouldn't you? <laughs> and Devil's Ass, uh, yes. yes, is the new name for uh, the Peak Cavern in Derbyshire. The new name? <laughs> <laughs> How does it come by, this nomenclature? Mm. This isn't the good old days, do you mind? <laughs> Four syllables get to new one. <laughs> God, we have hit BBC One, haven't we? <laughs> it's so cool because uh, it farts when uh, rainwater levels suddenly drop, creating a vacuum that sucks in air, according to cave manager John Harrison. Cave manager? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you get that job? <laughs> So the answer is that they've uh, all had their names changed for PR purposes, apart from Tony Blair. Yeah. The Peak Cabin in Derbyshire has been renamed Devil's Arse because of the farting noise made in the underground chamber, according to visitors. It's the most hideous and offensive noise to come out of a cavern since Ringo Starr's drumming. <laughs> <laughs> if you log on to the... Ringo Starr? <laughs> you think? Yeah, absolutely. In what way? Topical 60s gags. <laughs> <laughs> He's drumming on the uh, song Rain, for example, is exceptional. Is it? Yeah. For years you have been making these, these jokes about Ringo Starr not being a good drummer. He's a very he's going. He's, he's, a, <laughs> he's a very good drummer, Ringo. Ringo Starr's drumming, you know, is one of those things that everyone makes jokes about, isn't it? No. Apart no, I Ian, don't. Obviously. Ian doesn't make jokes about Ringo. You've never made a joke about Ringo Starr's drumming, have you, Ian? No, I haven't. But he's never heard of Ringo Starr. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, help me out here. I, I'm still upset that Tesco has said that my name is... <laughs> Ian and Rich, your uh, dangerous head cases are Osama bin Laden, Ian Duncan Smith, Martin McGuinness, and Jeremy Paxman. Osama bin Laden, uh, or as Tesco likes to call him, Ozzy. <laughs> 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 
sure that's it. Osama bin Laden. It looks like Cat Stevens. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Come on to something here. Is uh, Ian Duncan Smith the only one whose head comes to an ever such tiny but very discernible point? <laughs> Give us a clue, Martin preferably Gibson's including the answer. Why Jeremy Paxman's eating an invisible kebab. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true, but it's nowhere near the answer. Um, um, well... Osama Bin Laden saying, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be ZZ Top. <laughs> uh, well, as you'd expect with these four, it involves sport. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they all support Stoke City. <laughs> <laughs> You might get there via the book that Jerry Paxman has written. The, if you're aware. the book about fishing. fishing. Yeah, he wrote a book about fishing. And Martin McGuinness goes fishing. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, Osama bin Laden. He's written a book. Well, his pen name is J.R. Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. I knew I'd seen that face before. <laughs> That's the first lead the FBI has got. <laughs> <laughs> it's very old. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'll give you one point for this. The answer is that they're all keen anglers, apart from Osama bin Laden, who apparently prefers to use hand grenades to blow the fish out of the water. <laughs> uh, Martin McGuinness is also keen on fishing and poetry, uh, although he said he might give up fishing uh, if it's proved to be cruel. <laughs> and Paxman, of course, wrote... Uh, do you know the name of his book? Obviously not. No. Fishing for fun. Um, no. Come on, fish, come on! <laughs> Uh, yes, Ian Duncan Smith, uh, what's the one interesting fact about him? He's got a pointy head. <laughs> Apart from that, he's an eighth Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating fact about Ian Is Duncan he? Smith, yes. Yep. In fact, uh, on the leadership campaign trail this summer, uh, something interesting almost happened to Ian Duncan Smith. Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, don't let me, don't let me stop. <laughs> Not very bright, is he? No. He probably does. Why is that woman standing behind a scaffold? And I'll shake her hand. <laughs> well, they're in trouble because she's the leader of the Young Conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> and so to the limp biscuit that is our final missing words round, the usual sample of headlines. So, pray silence for uh, 600 frozen sheep. What? Baffle farmer. We have to thaw a herd. <laughs> Speaking, you don't get a herd of sheep, but yes. Thor of Flock sounds like a cabaret artist, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Shiver. Oh, no, they spilt off a motorway bridge. Uh, there was a crash and they fell off the bridge, all those sheep. How would the tabloids uh, describe that? Fall on top of you. Or <laughs> 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 in barred accident. <laughs> Um, not quite that bad. Uh, rain on cars. <laughs> rain well, I, I got the story. Yes, virtually there. A police spokesman said it must have been a bit of a shock for drivers to see hundreds of dead sheep falling on top of them. Thank God for police spokesmen. Where were they? Exactly. And as if proof were needed, here it is. Oh. Uh, next, uh, what was cheat on quiz show? Archer. Is the right answer. <laughs> This is Geoffrey Archer on What's My Line? Uh, to which, of course, the moment uh, the answer is prison toilet cleaner. <laughs> um, uh, next, not a penny more what? Not a penny more for those frozen sheep, because you meant to deliver them to my factory in Cardiff, <laughs> and they're on the M6 motorway. You're not getting any money. Different. I different. don't care what you say, Jeff. I'm sorry, that's the end of it. It's a different story. Uh, not a penny more for rail track, says Byers. Right, it's that story. Uh, a story which no has nothing shares. to do with Geoffrey Archer. Uh, or, or frozen sheep. Or frozen sheep. Well, what's it doing in the show? <laughs> <laughs> because it's to do with rail track. Well, you mean we were talking about frozen sheep, Jeffrey Archer, and rail track? <laughs> we like to cover a broad spectrum of... A broad what? Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> of stories that were in the news this week. And, and how many stories about Jeffrey Archer have been in the news this week? Uh, no. Quite a few, actually. <laughs> You'd be surprised. There's been no stories about <laughs> Jeffrey Archer. <laughs> Tell me that he cheated on what's my line. I don't think that was a story in the last two weeks. Well, it's a bloody that broad one, spectrum. It goes all the way back to 1968. <laughs> we've been covering, we've been doing a mop-up. Well, you know what the word news means. 
lost the clues in the first three letters. <laughs> We've been doing it. Well, like Ringo Starr's <laughs> drum. <laughs> Next, what discovered in spinach? Letter A. <laughs> it's not the right answer. Mm. Popeye's <laughs> face down. <laughs> Uh, equally incorrect. Oh, Osama bin Laden. No. <laughs> Face of Satan. The answer is cure for blindness, is what's being discovered in spinach. Uh, the spinach protein could help many people who are blind or semi-blind to see again. Uh, Dr Eli Greenbaum told a lamppost. <laughs> uh, next, uh, judge, you're what? You're free to go, Mr Hislop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, this is referring to a story that we've already had. Oh, you uh, you're, a, you're, a, you're a dishonest man, uh, Oh, is this Rupert Allison? Something like that. Yes, you're one witness. of the most dishonest witnesses I've ever seen, is actually uh, what the judge said. All of which uh, cowardly attacks mean that at the end of tonight's reign of terror, this week's uh, suspect parcels are uh, Ian and Rich with seven, while this week's surprise packages are Paul and Michael with eight. Mm. But before we let them loose on an unsuspecting world, the danger and excitement of our caption competition... There's <laughs> a bloke on the left saying, oh, yes, you all get agreed what you're going to wear before you come to work. Nobody's going to... <laughs> it's Dress Down Friday. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, the bloke on the left is saying, well, of course, I wash mine with my jeans and my green shirt. This is... <laughs> On which uh, life-affirming note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Rich Hall, Paul Merton and Michael Crick, and I leave you with news that in the hunt for bin Laden, the CIA's top undercover assassin makes one critical error as he returns from holiday with the kids. In the mountains of northern Afghanistan, after a month without any action, there's evidence the SAS are getting bored. <laughs> and in Lincolnshire, the prison psychologist is unimpressed as Geoffrey Archer makes a desperate bid for freedom. <laughs> Good night. Stay with us here on UK TV Documentary. We'll be looking at some of the best bits of Have I Got 2000 for you in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs>